night, more trouble for the finance minister and battled Ken Ofriata as Shraj confirms receipt of complaint from Tiger IPI and the NAS Ermeyo NAS on alleged conflict of interest involving him and the former minister of state, Charles Edubwain. I can confirm that two days ago we received, the commission received uh, a complaint from Tiger IPI under the name of Anas Armia Anas, alleging conflict of interest of the finance minister, Ken of Uriata. National Security Minister Hint terrorists are targeting Galamse site in Ghana to raise funds for the operations in the country after engaging in similar activities in Mali and Burkina Faso. The criminals we want to take advantage of Galamse activities in our country also to raise money to do what they do in other countries and what they may plan to do in our uh, country. Mineral Minerals Commission boss insists it will be deceitful to believe illegal mining can end overnight. We'll bring you details also tonight here on Join News Prime, governing NPP, considering its options after the second day high court dismissed an election petition seeking to remove the Jamar MP over alleged dual citizenship at the time of filing her nominations. Sir Epa Kota, you know the ultimate, until the football, I will draw. You need a client book, you have a customer. You have a customer. We'll hear from the MP and her lawyers who are celebrating this judgment. Hello, this is Johnny Prime with me, Ernest Minu. Hello again, many thanks for choosing us. The Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, says it has received an official complaint from Tiger IPI and private investigator Anas Arimeya Anas on a conflict of interest situation involving the Finance Minister, Ken Ofriata, and former Minister of State, Charles Edubwain. Already, Mr. Dubwine has been dismissed for alleged influence peddling and using the name of the Vice President, Dr. Baumia, to receive bribes from investigators in an investigative piece by Anas. He has denied the allegations but says he'll cooperate with state investigative bodies to prove his innocence. Charge Commissioner Joseph Wittal explained to my colleague Mamiesi Thompson that the initial assessment of the petition has begun to establish the merit or otherwise of the petition? I can confirm that two days ago we received, the commission received um, a complaint from Tiger IPI under the name of Anas Armia Anas, alleging conflict of interest of the Finance Minister Ken of Riata and the former Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, uh, Mr. Charles Edu Guahin, uh, in respect of companies that they have. And the allegations are that there is conflict of interest in terms of their official duties as public officers and the companies in which they have interests in, in terms of uh, government bonds. And so the case is going through the standard process of assessment. And in order to make sure that it meets the procedural requirements under the commission's regulations, as well as whether it is really within the mandate of the commission. Based on that, we will then decide what next steps to take, whether to investigate or if we think it is not within, then uh, we will decline. Right. And this process you're talking about, usually how long does it take for you to make a decision? No, that one is more of a, an internal, it doesn't require investigation. It's more of the allegations made consistent with the laws of the country and the, 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 the laws against which those allegations are said to be affecting 
is it is there a matter f- that should concern the commission to investigate mm. and then procedurally have they has the complaint met all the standards of a complaint within the constitutional instrument regulating the complaints the receiving of complaints and the investigations of complaints and of course whether it's within the mandates of the commission all this must be done before we can proceed with a decision on whether to investigate or not so you had that the commissioner of charge joseph Wetal confirming to john news that indeed a petition has been filed by tiger ipi and anas arima anas We'll bring you more on this later. But away from that, the National Security Ministry has revealed terrorists are working to take over Glamse activities to raise funds for the operations. Albert Kandapa refers to similar situations in Mali and Burkina Faso, where the terrorists have relied on proceeds from gold mines to fund the activities. He claims they hope to mount a similar attack in Ghana. But the minister says his team is working to ensure that activities do not spill over into the country. Here are excerpts of a statement from the Information Ministry Sunday. In Mali, in Burkina Faso, the terrorists have always been attracted to gold mining areas. Clearly, they try to make money from these, from gold mining activities to undertake the criminal activities that they, they, they do. The criminals, they want to take advantage of Galamse activities in our country also to raise money to do what they do in other countries and what they may plan to do in our uh, country. Uh, we, we, we are aware of this. We study in it. We believe that we are... Uh, we, we, we do know what it is that has to be done in this area and we work hard to make sure that we are not overtaken by events. But clearly, one way that you can make cheap money to go and undertake some of these uh, criminal activities uh, is Galamse. So it's of interest uh, to us. Well, the fight against Galamse is still top of government agenda and the Land and Natural Resources Ministry the latest measure announced by the minister, Samuel Abujinapo, is to punish individuals who sell or offer their lands for illegal trade. He spoke to my colleague Evan Smith on PM Express. There are partners we are seeking to bring on board to help us deal with this issue of illegal small scheme. But it's a major issue. And as you know, we've been trying to battle this matter and we put in place a whole host of measures and interventions to be able to um, get on top of this issue of illegal small scheme mining. We haven't got into a satisfactory situation yet. I think it's important that we admit that. We still have challenges. We still have difficulties out there. Uh, we've ramped up our efforts, as you know. The military are now out there forcefully trying they're to clamp the, down. They're back in the forest? The, 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 the military are back out there. They are back on the river bodies, trying to clear the river bodies, trying to clear the forest reserves of our country. Before I came here to Egypt, I had a very useful, productive, extensive meeting with the Forestry Commission Board and management and we've come to some major conclusions there are about 261 forest reserves in our country ghana the idea is to find whatever means to protect these forest reserves from elite attack from illegal small scale mining so yes there are difficulties yes there are challenges but what i want to say is that we are absolutely committed to dealing with this ho canker of illegal small scale mining there are some new measures we are intending to bring on board for example we began examining or interrogating the possibility of going to Parliament to seek legislative intervention, which will say that anybody who, were to, who was to give out land, any school, skin, family, clan, or individual who gives out land for purposes of illegal mosque mining, the state will have the right to confiscate the land. So we want to, we, we, we've begun the examination of that. We believe that may help. So these are additional measures we intend to roll out, that illegal mining continues to be a major driver of deforestation. And the earlier we clamp down on illegal mining uh, generally, but in forest reserves in particular, the better it will be for the work we are seeking. 
Let's go to the phone lines now and speak to Dr. Kwesi Baini, Managing Partner for African Center for Conflict Resolution and Security. Dr. Baini, thank you very much for your time here on Join News Prime. Um, all along, the fight against illegal mining has focused on the environment and the economic consequence. Now we are realizing there's a security threat to it. Is this coming in too late? Excuse me, your line seems to be fluctuating. Can you adjust your system a little bit? Well, well if you can hear me, Dr. Baini, I, I'm just trying to get from you whether it is too late that we are realizing at this time that the fight against illegal mining is not just about the environment or the economic consequence. Is it coming uh, rather too late? Well, if you're referring to, let me say hello to the listeners over there also, but then if you're referring to the subject matter of Galamse, in relation to security, as per what the Minister of the National Security was commenting, then of course, to me, in my own perspective, then it is not really worth it. Not everything as far as security is concerned that we need to put it out there. Intelligence is picked. We have different kinds of intelligence, and when certain intel is picked, it's supposed to be subject to, indeed, analysis and know where and which institution or stakeholder, as far as security architecture is concerned, to handle it. It's not everything. By so doing, and I can I tell you, it's not today nor yesterday. It's quite some years now that the al Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda, the Boko Haram, the ISIS, all of them, they have their agents here who have been monitoring in our terms of our communication uh, coming from the political divide and, uh, and also from the speakers, or what they call it, the communicators of the various political parties, individuals, and of course the media, the way we communicate. All these are put together by the world, the officials of these very agents here and to do it to help them and, you know, info, getting them informed of what next to do. They wouldn't mind taking 20 years, you know, um, you know, gather intelligence, and when they did it, strike, and that's the disaster. I don't think I've ever heard any kind of um, terrorists in this world who have really gone to uh, act and field on their target because they take their time. So Galamse, actually, one of them is what is one of the very prone areas. That is true, but then. Should it be outside there? That should be an internal subject to be dealt with as well as security agencies concerned. The Boko Haram or the terrorists are always looking for an avenue. In fact, they need 0.001% space and what they cost, the disaster they will cost will be enormous. So it is the, the, the duty or the, 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 the owner's lies on our security agents, the security, the aspect of intelligence to be able to handle information and what intelligence that gathered very well, not everything to be put out there. So, uh, Minister for Labor, Minister for National Security was in a haste. I don't know whether he had some advices around him to put it out there or out of what it is, I don't know. But to me, it's not for the consumption. It could be the consumption of the security and the responsible that is the NIB, that is National Security and uh, National Investigation Bureau. Uh, the police, the army, and so forth, and all the stakeholders to be... And, and Dr. Bani, now that it's been put out there, does it jeopardize the fight in any way? Well, it, 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 it somehow, but then there's, all is not lost. But it's a caution that I would try to put across there that it should be circumspect and very tolerant in when they are putting some matters related to security out there. On this note, even though it's put out there, this rather fortify themselves and strengthen themselves behind what has been put out there, which is the risk. They should now, you know, beef up their security in the areas there, be awake and alert. And the, furthermore, going forward, um, they should not watch out any kind of information from where is a strategic place for the information of the terrorists. Very well. Thank but you very much, now, Dr. Baini. Uh, we are grateful for your time. That's the managing partner of ACOD there, speaking to us, a security analyst. We stay with the issue of illegal mining. The chief executive officer of the Minerals Commission, Martin Kwekwees, he says, the outlawed illegal small-scale mining enterprise cannot be defeated overnight. Mr. Isi says most of the illegal miners operate in the hard-to-reach areas. That makes it near impossible for law enforcers to effect any arrest. Speaking at an ongoing workshop on artisanal 
small-scale mining here in Accra. The CEO says the solution to the sustainable small-scale mining sector is to issue license to designated areas. If you ask me, as the head of the regulatory body, what, is, what will I mention as number one when it comes to ASM? I'll tell you, getting mineralized areas for them to work. If it's a matter of putting them in some of these so-called blockered areas or what we call areas designated for small-scale mining, I'll look into the face of my minister he knows and tell him, and I've told him before, minister will have solved small-scale mining in Ghana, will have solved all these issues. Because we have blocked out several thousands of small-scale, uh, what do you call it, uh, several thousand square kilometers for small-scale mining. By and large, these are kind of things that we are trying to do. Now, the, small, the community mining, we don't give them any different type of authorization. It's still a small-scale license. The fundamental difference is that as much as possible, we try to encourage many of the people to do it in the community. And you don't need to come from the community to apply. Chiefs can lead it, or even a group of sponsors can come go and talk to the community. What is important is that you employ a lot of people from the community. Like the one we did on Friday, which was launched by the minister, we are targeting anything between 1,000 and 2,000 people to be employed. So we hope that once we do this thing properly, very well, we'll be in a position to improve the situation. Anybody who tells you that Galamse can end overnight is deceiving you because it is not an easy thing. Some of the areas are even inaccessible, if you know very well. You, 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 vehicles can even go there. They walk and go deep inside the forest or inside the bush to go and do the illegal mining. So it will take some time to get a full grip on the issue. Speaking at the same workshop, the Lands and Natural Resources Minister Samuel Abujinapo says government is fully aware of the complexities and the recalcitrant nature of the cartel involved in illegal small-scale mining. However, he reiterated the administration's commitment to sanitize the sector. Lately, we have had to adopt more stringent measures, including the declaration of river bodies as red zones for mining, the ban on recognizance, prospecting, and or exploration in forest reserves, the launch of Operation Hall 2 to raid our river bodies and forest reserves of illegal mining activities, the introduction of speed boats and river guards to patrol and protect our, our river bodies, ban on the manufacture, sale, and or use of floating platforms known as chamfine, which are used in the pollution of the river bodies and the enhancement of the punishment regime for persons involved in illegal mining. While taking these preventive measures, in partnership with the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners, we launched the Responsible Small Scale Miners Award Scheme to recognize and reward small scale miners who are committed to responsible and sustainable mining practices. And through the National Landscape Restoration and Small Scale Mining Project, we are strengthening integrated natural resource management and enhanced governance in small scale mining. Ladies and gentlemen, these measures undoubtedly have yielded some results. However, we still have more to do to come to grips with this canker of illegal small scale mining. We recognize the complexities involved in this fight and the recalcitrant nature of the cartels involved, largely because of the huge sums of money involved in this enterprise. But we are committed to work with all stakeholders, including the World Gold Council, to ensure that we build a responsible, sustainable, and environmentally sound small-scale mining industry here in Ghana. You're watching Johnny's Prime with me, Ernest Mina. Let's return to our top story, which is the uh, petition filed by Tiger IPI and Anas Armea Anas, citing the finance minister and the former minister of state, Charles E. Dubohin, for uh, issues involving uh, conflict of interest uh, at Shraj. We've been joined by uh, Citizens Movement co chairperson Adam Senanu uh, via phone. Thank you very much, Mr. Senanu, for your time here on Join News Prime. And so, uh, a few years ago, we saw Broja Jemfi uh, file a similar case of conflict of interest against the finance minister. Uh, that was involving the issue of the $2.25 billion bond. Uh, now, it is not very clear what the allegations are against the finance minister, except that we know that the former minister of state, uh, Charles Edubwine, has been cited for influence peddling. Uh, your initial take on this, uh, the turn of events and this petition filed. 
Well, um, it's very likely that Tiger Eye had other rushes. You know, when you're doing these video clips, they have rushes they put together. Right. And maybe for strategic reasons, um, the bits that have the evidence that would pin down what the minister has done may not have been put in the Galamse um, documentary. Mm. So I'm quite clear in my mind that Tiger Eye uh, must have something substantive they have submitted. Uh, it's up to try to take a look at it. And in the context of Article 284, which says that you should even put yourself in a potential conflict of interest position. So if you can, they can establish any linkage with a company that has been on the bond market, that has had to work with the government and the Ministry of Finance, to which these parties have an interest, uh, even to the extent of beneficial ownership, uh, that would make a conclusive case. So it'll be, it's, it's, it's early days yet, but it'll be interesting to find out what exactly they had as evidence and who they have submitted to charge. But is, isn't it also interesting that we have a case already before the special prosecutor involving the same man, at least Charles A. Dubois, and then another petition filed at charge. For, for you, a, a, an anti-corruption watcher, uh, do you envisage some challenges going forward as we run these investigations? Not at all. I mean, it's, like, it's exciting for us to watch democracy at work. In other jurisdictions, I remember at one point, Trump had 18 different agencies of the U.S. investigating him, as many as 18. Mm. Um, the multiplicity actually gives a lot more credence in terms of the different angles people come from. So it could be criminal, it could be civil. Yeah. In this case, it relates to human rights and administrative justice. Let me point out that we're very careful when we're crafting the, the law for the special prosecutor that it would not overlap with the mandate of charge. The judge is exclusively responsible for administrative justice and issues of conflict of interest, which the special prosecutor will not be looking into in respect of what the president. So uh, I don't anticipate any overlaps in terms of the conclusions. I think this is good. And I commend Tiger Eye for going beyond the investigative piece to putting it before charge uh, for some resolutions in this matter. And whilst we, we commend Tiger Eye PI for the work that they have done, um, in, in the interest of um, the fight against, you know, uh, corruption and, and the, the public spirit, would you think that it would be prudent for us to share the evidence, as it were, uh, in order to get allies like yourself who are interested in uh, anti-corruption and, and good governance, uh, in order for, for the public to also probe the issues? I mean, trust me, I would love to have known it yesterday. But knowing the way things happen in Ghana, I'm quite sure that it's the best interest of all of us that this got quietly to charge. Uh, they are able to take an informed position and then before it comes out. Uh, otherwise, people may be very quick to cover their trails and come up with other hurdles um, and throw a spanner into the wet. So, yes, I'm sure all of us will be excited. I'm hoping in the next two, three weeks, we'll all get to know exactly what they have uh, submitted to charge uh in this matter because as you know the documentary didn't have anything to do with the minister so it's really curious for all of us but knowing the context of anas himself and the team they must have a legal position that they are clear on with respect to article 284 which they are they are expecting that charge can act on mm -hmm. so yeah not prudent at the moment but prudent in the next few weeks and and just finally uh, the issues of conflict of interest also played out at the special committee uh, put together by the speaker uh, to probe the issues uh, raised by the minority in the essential motion. If what you know played out is anything to consider, do you still think that there's grounds for the finance minister to be cited for any situation of a conflict of interest? Well, yes. Um, I mean, yes, a man can say that I, I, I don't have any interest elsewhere. Uh, but one could then eventually find some evidence that shows that, uh, as a matter of fact, the person still did have an interest or had somebody uh, in place standing stead for them, and therefore there's beneficial ownership. They are the actual owners, but they put somebody else there. Right. So uh, we cannot, at the moment, um, envisage that there is a, a clear slate for the minister. Um, and as you'd imagine, before Tiger Eye's thing about 
the Minister of State, uh, one would not have even imagined that something like that would happen and be caught on tape. I mean, I would not have thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. So let's wait till it plays out, and I'm sure all of us um, and Ghana will be the better for it. Adam Sananu, thank you very much indeed for your time. And that's a cool chairman of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Let's do some uh, party politics, but at the courts, because the Gavin New Patriotic Party is considering its options after its second day high court dismissed an election petition against the MP for Jamrat Dokas, Alfo Tofi. The court presided over by Justice Dr. Richmond Osekre dismissed the petition and declared the MP eligible on the grounds that she lost her Ivorian citizenship at the very time she acquired the Ghanaian citizenship. Chairman of the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee of the NPP, Frank Davis, spoke to journalists after the verdict was delivered. As, as a litigant, Sir Edward Carter, you know the ultimate, ultimate football. I will draw. One board draw will court. You either win your case or you lose it. Court Akasa. Osi Bisen Uzibek. Okay, that's it. The budget judgment in your account. The near client book war, the Bekasa. Zah over with Chin, the Mama was right. But since he has Yasu, he didn't be him. That is what the court has said, and that is it. Meanwhile, the Member of Parliament, Dokas Afo Tofe, says she's happy she can now focus on her parliamentary responsibilities. Just, uh, you know, out of voice, I'm just very grateful to God. Um, no, it's been a long journey. I've gone through a lot, but finally, God has really, you know, um, done it for me, and I'm very grateful to God and everybody that has been very supportive, especially uh, Aduchi and also the lawyer from Ivory Coast, my uh, chairman, the original chairman, everybody. I mean, they've been very supportive, of course. My family, my daughter was here today. So I'm very, very grateful to God. God has been good to me. It has not been easy, but... Well, her lawyer has been praising the court for the judgment, describing it as one that uh, puts democracy in a brighter light. I, I need to thank God Almighty and the court for the rather, I mean, you know, brilliant judgment. The scholarship demonstrated in the judgment is pleasing. We are extremely grateful to the court. We are extremely grateful to the almighty God. I'm grateful to my colleague lawyers, the regional executives of our party, the national executives, and more importantly, let me say, H.E. John Dramani Mahama, he has been on this matter right from the beginning. The expenses and everything. I mean, I'm extremely grateful. The national chairman of the party is not left out the general secretary, all of them have been part of making what has happened today great. And I appreciate what has happened today. I'm extremely grateful. The judgment speaks of itself. The judgment speaks of itself. We put in a lot of industry. We didn't want to leave any loophole anywhere. I mean, culminating in traveling right to Ivory Coast, together with my client, the MP. And we are extremely grateful to God. And I thank you, the media men. In the course of this trial, some of your headlines were really discomforting, but I'm extremely grateful. Thank you. You're watching Johnny's Prime with me, Anna Smino, still to come in the bulletin. The long held view and argument that the Volta region represents the microcosm of Ghana's tourism industry has been given a major boost with. Sight enhanced a canopy walkway added to the Oti waterfall at Amejope in the Volta region. We have details of the story and more in this package. Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us here on Join News Prime. It is set to be a showdown this Thursday when the Finance Minister Ken Ofriata appears before Parliament to present the 2023 budget. The Minister will be doing so while facing censure and a threat of boycott by 98 MPs from the NPP caucus. But Ken Ofriata is determined 
to present the budget. Finance Minister, how do you feel about this whole process? I mean, do you feel about this process? Join his life. I mean, it's, I guess it's democracy in play, and um, we just seek um, fairness, and um, we are confident in uh, how the process um, will evolve. So, so ne next week, will you be presenting the budget? Will you do so yourself? Um, yeah, I expect so. That seems to be a weird question. What, what, what do you say to the NDP MPs who say they don't want you to do so next week? I, I, I don't know. I haven't heard that officially, so I'll see. Anyway, but thank you. It's been a very long day. And well, today, the group of 98 MPs are responding directly to the minister, insisting they are not backing down on their demand to have him sacked. Spokesperson for the group MP for Asantia Chim North, Andia Piakubi, says the minister's response to their issues is unfortunate. Well, uh, hearing is not compulsory. I give him the benefit of uh, decision whether or not he's heard. But we are also resolute in our approach. And, uh, well, if he hasn't heard, maybe in the course of time he will hear. Mm. And for which reason, indeed, for me, I would have thought that the very day that uh, president said we will go to IMF. That should have been the day he he, he would have resigned if he left me alone because mm -hmm. he had promised that we would never have to get there. And if uh, in the cases are that we are going, then I think to be honest with yourself and to be honest with the people of Ghana, you should have resigned because where is your credibility mm -hmm. in going for the program? Because and indeed leading it, indeed you had been come you had come out to say that never would we go to IMF. And you didn't only speak to Ghanaians, you spoke to the whole world, and indeed IMF also heard you. So if it comes to a time that you have to lead a charge coming to the IMF, what will IMF think of you? And what will IMF think of our whole pro program? Mm. So we thought that uh, you should have left the scene for somebody else to carry uh, the mantle. Go to IMF and say, uh, my friend was wrong. Now we are here. Uh, please deal with us. And you would have carried enough credibility talking to IMF then. So uh, for me, at that point, uh, if I was uh, leading or part of the IMF team, I wouldn't have taken you seriously. So I think for that reason, to give Ghana a fair opportunity to interact or negotiate with IMF, uh, I would have resigned if I was in his position. Meanwhile, the National Democratic Congress in, its, uh, par in Parliament says the responses of the Finance Minister before the Central Committee was dishonest, claiming he failed to respond to the key issues raised by the minority in their motion. Um, first, let me say that I was disappointed listening to the Minister because he did not answer the questions. He was dancing around the questions and not going to the specifics. For example, on the issue of the National Cathedral, mm -hmm. it is obvious that an expenditure had happened. This is a national project well advertised by the state, commissioned by His Excellency the President. Yet, the minister responsible for finance had the courage to appear before Parliament and say to us, that they did not budget for it. That in itself is wrong in the first place. He informed Parliament that between 2018 to 2022, all the payment they've made came from the contingency votes. The contingency votes is there for unforeseen expenditures in the course of the year. The so-called government expenditure on the National Cathedral was anticipated. Was anticipated even before the budget was read. What surprises me is that for four years in a row, it has always been an emergency payment. What sort of finance minister do we have? Now, Gavin says it is working to introduce more variety to the planting for food and jobs market. Since its inception almost two weeks ago, the Agric Ministry has sold mainly plantain and rice at, at its market. But some of the patrons say they are fed up. They want some variety. They want staple foods and vegetables to be added to the list of items sold. Michael Ashley has more the following report. Scores of people show up at Obraspot, 
where government's PFJ market has been set up. Plantain is the only foodstuff being sold at the market currently. Many patrons have come here because they believe the price of the plantain is relatively less expensive than what's being sold on the open market. Uh, most 500, cities. 500 Ghana cities. But why did you buy so much? Um, oh, we use it for restaurants. Felix works with a reputable restaurant in Accra. Uh, why, why do you find it prudent to come and buy from this particular market, not the regular market? Um, this is an opportunity for uh, you to grab, so you just have to be here and just have it for yourself. Quickly, would you say it's cheaper here or it's more expensive here? Okay, so to speak the truth, is cheaper. Very cheap. If you compare the price, what are you talking about? How cheap is it? Much cheaper. For months, many people complained over the skyrocketing cost of foodstuff on the open market. The market women attributed the increased cost to the fluctuating cost of transportation. The PFJ market was instituted by the Agri Ministry with a promise to sell cheaper food items by cutting the items from the farm gates to the various markets. It has since received positive response from patrons. I've bought like six. Six bunches? Yeah. How much did that cost you? It's now up to 50 cities. Okay, the last time I bought some at the market for 70 cities. So by far, I can say I've saved a lot. 75 cities for five. Wow. So you bought five bunches? Yeah. And that's 75 Ghana yeah. cities. Why, why buy so much? Ah, it's for me and my friends. Wow. Why, why did they ask you to buy for them? Yeah, yeah, they asked me to buy for them. But why are you buying from this particular market? Why am I buying these from not not from the market to this place? I think this is far better than the market. Since its inception two weeks ago, plantain yam and local rice have been the dominant items sold. the patrons are now asking for a variety of items to be sold as well <laughs> But the only day, I'm the bar, and and contumely, any makoni ni adua. I'm the bar is ana contumely soefu, ni adua soefu makoni soefu. And so I'm the bar is ana so I'm the can hold the ad. Now you say, yeah, we. We think it's not only the plantain they will sell. If they have, they have, they brought more uh, more goods than more uh, 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 with the plantain is okay. But when we have local rice. I think 50 cc. We can buy local rice. I see. Now, apart from the local rice, well, what else are you looking for? And I think maize. Because these are three things we usually eat more in Ghana okay. Banku, Fufui, and rice. Yeah. Great. Responding to this, special advisor to their Greek minister, George Odro, said the ministry is working to introduce more variety to its basket. I've been following it since the day it started. Yeah, I've been part of it, so I've been following every day. So it's not major... only plantain. When we started, we've done plantain, uh, yam, oil, rice, kokonte, and tuzafi, and you keep on adding. So it's not only plantain. So what, what, for today, when can they expect the the other ones that you pro you promised? Today we are doing uh, rice, oil, kokonte, tuzafi, and. Uh, coconut oil at the ministry okay. not at this location okay. here is only plantain okay. but at the ministry we are doing what I, I just told you even after two weeks the question frequently asks concerns the sustainability of the initiative especially as the festive season nears for joy news michael ashale with the current economic situation wreaking havoc on the everyday lives of Ghanaians. Political leaders are turning to God for answers to stem the tide. The past, this past Sunday, the president, his vice, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and their predecessor, John Germani Mahama, were in church to seek the face of God for answers and assurances to the flock. More in the following news next report. 
So would you now they will you President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado encouraging a gathering to hold on to their faith no matter the situation. From biblical point of view, we are admonished to seek the face of God and we will find answers. So in the face of Ghana's current economic challenges, it appears seeking the face of God is our only hope. So our leaders have all turned to God. Over the weekend, while speaking at the 70th anniversary celebration of Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Church in Tema, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia said they understand the period we're in, but they believe the grace of God will see them through. There will always be moments of hopelessness, despair, doubt, fear and uncertainty. As your government, we do recognize the difficulties and uncertainty we are experiencing in our country. But with renewed strength and hope in the word of the Lord, we are forever confident that we will ride this storm and turn things around to the glory of our Lord. Former President John Dramani Mahama won't be left out of the season of seeking the face of God. Speaking at the 175th anniversary Thanksgiving service of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church in Hope, he asked for people to pray for him to come and rescue Ghanaians from the current hardships. We must always spread Christian love, especially in this time when money doesn't like noise. After we pray for Pakistan, the uh, uh, moderator should also say a special prayer for me and for the NDC. <laughs> so that in some year that's coming, God will smile on us and give us the power to come and rescue this country from the suffering we're going through. Well, President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado disagrees. Speaking at the Presbyterian Church of Ghana at Chim Ebuakwa Presbytery, he said people should have faith in his government that everything will be over soon. <laughs> So once both leaders, start from the government side and from the minority side, are praying to God, whose prayer will God listen to? Only him can tell. Apologies, we couldn't bring you that story uh, about the facelift that uh, the waterfalls Ote has seen uh, in Amal Japan and the Volta region. But uh, hopefully in business, uh, Pius will bring you uh, those breathtaking videos. Thank you very much for your company. I'm Ernest Mini. Stay with us.